Britain. We're joined by Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke, who is the president of Academic Staff Union of Universities. Uh, it's good to have you on the program, Prof. I, I know that on November the 15th, three weeks ago, you gave that ultimatum, three-week ultimatum to the federal government. And in your words, you said that if nothing is done, then ASU will go on strike. So does that mean ASU is effectively on strike as we speak? Well, you, you are quoting me wrongly. That wasn't exactly what we said. What we said is that we are giving government three weeks to resolve the problem. If they don't, at the end of three weeks, we meet to take an action. That's what we said. We didn't mention about the strike or not, but it's part of the options which my union will need to decide, our members, our branches will need to decide. Well, I'm, I'm actually quoting you, and this is what you said, we're giving the federal government a three-week ultimatum. If after three weeks they don't meet our demands, we will be going on strike. So I say you meant to say that you will be consulting with your members and deciding on what to do. So that means you're not on strike right now. Maybe, okay, maybe you are, you are quoting some of the, the media, not, not us. Our neck met and said we are giving government three weeks to implement the issue we reached our MOA and MOU. And after that three weeks, the union will meet to take an action, further action. That's what we said. We didn't mention strike. Our strike, we have procedure for going on strike. The principal officers of the union, the national officers don't have uh, the power to call for a strike. It is, it is the members starting from the branch. Our union, our activity starts up, down, not down, not down, up. So that is exactly where we are. The three weeks ended on Sunday, and we have gone, we are going, we met on Sunday, and we are going back to our branches as usual. You should know our procedure now for them to give us the mandate of what we should do. What type of action should we take now that the three weeks has expired? Right, so if you say you're not on strike, uh, what is the situation uh, with your demands with government, six of them? How many have uh, been met? That, and, okay, uh, that, okay, thank you. As that man, only one out of the six items part of, have been partly implemented. That is the revitalization fund, where they told us they had at least 20 billion to some of the universities that passed, that were, able to, they were successful in the process of uh, evaluating what they want to do with the money. I think that's where, that's the level they have done. All of that they have not implemented, even after the intervention of several bodies, after the union had been so patient with the NCS August. And we believe that now that they have refused to implement it, we are going back to our branches to start the process of uh, what we will do at the end of, the end of that process. Well, Prof, um, it, it, when you say one has been uh, um, met, only one has been met halfway. And we yes. also understand from, you know, available information that the Minister of Labor and um, Employment has said that he is also going to review the process. Is there any meeting in the offing with any of the authorities? No, no. They have not reached out to us. If you recall, if you can recall, that in August, they gave us the same promise that by the end of August, they will implement all those six items. And with that, we went to our end, end this, uh, our NEC, our National Security Council meeting, and reported. And they said, good, let's give them the three months, the, the, the end of August. They didn't implement anyone. We met again in October, and they said, ah, by the end of October, all those items will be implemented for the number one day to number six. And that they will implement it with timelines, and none was implemented. So that's why in October, we met with the chief of staff. He said he will intervene, and it took be it was not resolved. You also recall we met with the minister of labor. He, he was a conciliator. When they also all agreed that they were going to implement it, they were not. Then we met the speaker of the House of Assembly, the House, National House of uh, House of Representatives. He invited us and all the parties, and we met. And they all told us that a week after that meeting, which three weeks ago, that all those issues will be resolved. But now it's three weeks after that date, and none of them have been fully resolved. Which means that it's a deliberate attempt. So whatever the minister is saying, we will not take you serious because they have said it before and they didn't implement. So what now is the next line of action? Uh, you have said that there is a process to ask yes. for taking any decision yes. or any action in the light of this. The only decision or the only action that people have feared over time has been the strike. What other options are there if not strike? Well, the 
there are so many options. One is that we expect the public to ask the government to implement what they have promised to do since August. Actually, since, Gen since January 2021. Remember, when we call off our strike, they should go ahead and implement them as a promise. And they, nobody will be talking about strike. With us, you know, we don't love strike. It, we are forced to go on strike. And I think for once, the government should ensure that they do what they have promised to do, that they will do since January last year, this year. That's a year now, almost a year now. They should implement them so that they will not talk about strike. Uh, Prof, the Ministry of Labor and Employment is just like a conciliator. The real institution, I mean, that should be taking this head on, should be the Ministry of Education, isn't it? What's yes. the Ministry of Education saying about this matter? Well, we, we need to know the function of the conciliator. It's like a judge. You, you invite all the parties to a meeting. And you with you as the chairman. And in your meeting day, everybody agree that they will do X, Y, Z. Is it not? It's, it's, function, it's also the function of that Minister of Labor to ensure that that thing is conciliated, is implemented, not just the Minister of Education. Are you following? Well, it, it does, is that in any way... In, when the Constitution comes in, the, is the central... The central body is not the Minister of Labor, not Education. It is the duty of the Minister of Labor to enforce the Minister of Education, the Minister of Finance, to ensure that, and then the Minister, to ensure that these things are done. We are also trying to relate with the Minister of Labor, but they don't get it back to us. They don't answer our call, they don't call us for meeting. That is where we are. So it's not just about Minister of Labor. We are also trying to get in touch with the Minister of Education, Minister of Finance, and they don't, they're not doing what they should do. So if anybody is precipitating a strike or any action, these three ministries should be held responsible. Ministry of Education, Ministry of Finance, NITDA, and the Ministry of Labor. Minister of Labor. They should be held responsible. So, Prof, uh, as we wind down on this, quite a lot to unpack, and I do hope we'll do that in the coming days. But uh, So the Ministry of Finance is playing a major role in this as well, yeah. because this is essentially about funds, money, yes. uh, in terms of you know payments, revitalization funds, and the rest. But... Uh, on, on, on a big picture now, uh, on, on that note, I'd like to wind down on this. I recall that this ultimatum came uh, some days after President Buhari was outside of the country, and he spoke quite highly about the educational system, saying that, you know, Nigerians are doing quite well around the world, and that's because of the good education they get here in Nigeria. And for a lot of people listening, the picture they would imagine is that the education sector in Nigeria is good at different levels. But at the level you operate, just how good are things such that you, you, you decided to go on this journey? Thank you. Whatever the president said outside the country, it just, as far as I'm concerned, it just to create the impression that everything is working, which is not, is not correct. Maybe I expect even the, our colleagues in the press to go around the universities. As I speak to you, in one of the first generation universities, they, they were using stove as a bossing burner. We went to one of the higher rated state university. 60 female students were staying in a, temp, in a three by three uh, meter room, and uh, each have a stove. If you go to one of the university, students were having lectures in what looked like a stadium. Go to, you can do that. I think you want a chairman to do this. This is what we expect from you. Go to university, you see students sitting on the bed floor, hanging on window, having lectures. You have a laboratory that can take 10 people. You have 1,000 students. It, would that generate would that be, we don't have a better education in, in such a level? We will not. And the apex of education anywhere in the world is the university, which is universal. The condition you have in the university in Nigeria should be what you have in the U.S. Because it's universal. The product can work anywhere. But in Nigeria, what you do, the politicians like now today are busy proliferating universities when they are not funding those they have. In those countries, look at the budgetary allocation to education. In the 60s and 70s, I will want to get more than 30% of budget to education. Here we are giving 5.6, the lowest in the world. And the president is saying that uh, uh, we are doing well. Those who are doing well, they are doing well because they have gone outside and be exposed to better training facilities and what have you. And those who have been trained when Nigerian universities were working, up to 1980s, early 80s and uh, late 80s, right. our universities were functioning properly. Students were coming from outside the country, and students, our lecturers were going outside, and lecturers are coming in. Well, but then it does not happen.
so I this is what we'll do. Where my department, they were lecturer we're, for four different countries teaching one department. Right. Is this it we're, we're totally out of time, but this is what we'll do. This is an issue that we'll definitely take up in the coming days. I will look forward to having you and, of course, to hear what the decision is eventually. But we'd like to thank you so much for the little time thank you spent with us. Thank professor you. Emmanuel Oshudeke is the president of ASU. He's also professor of soil chemistry, Michael Opara, University of Agriculture, Umadike. He joins us from Abia State uh, this morning. So